Hi, welcome to this video on PCB design using fritzing. So hopefully by now you have your schematic all done. You know, so here's back to my schematic of that same sense of time tester that I used in the previous video. What we're going to do today is we're going to convert the schematic into a printed circuit board design. So in fritzing, we're going to go to the PCB panel. Now when you first go into the PCB panel, uh, as you can see, it just has all of my parts, and these are their, their physical footprints. This is what they should look like, where the holes should be, etc., etc., on an actual printed circuit board. But it just puts them down randomly within this box that's going to be the board. So I'm going to do a few things before I get started here. First, I'm going to adjust the size of the box. Now, for this project, just because I can, I'm going to do about 100 millimeters by, let's say, 60 millimeters. I'm just picking those numbers uh, are somewhat arbitrarily. Uh, and I could decide later I want to make it smaller. But for your design, you have to find out what the actual limitations are for the size of your board. Now, uh, the larger the board you make, the more expensive it's going to be to create. So that's kind of an important thing to think about. So the more, the larger the board, the more expensive to get made. So I'm just picking these numbers, but it looks like from the number of parts I'll be able to shrink that when I'm done, and maybe I will. Now, as I already said, all your parts are just kind of dumped randomly on the board. This isn't the way you'd want the board laid out. These are parts are just there randomly. So the important thing to do is to start to arrange your parts in what would be a more logical way on the board. So my my chip here has kind of, or my circuit here has kind of one main component, and it's this 555 timer. So I'm going to try to bring that more towards the center of the board. Um, but I, I also have my voltage regulator. And so I'm going to look at my schematic and try to remember, okay, my voltage regulator, C3, C4, and my battery, those are all things I actually want to have physically close together on the board. My source voltage, my regulator, and the two capacitors attached to the regulator, I want those all physically close together. So I'm going to find all of those things. I'm going to group them close together. So this is my voltage regulator, and I can tell because it's labeled U2, and on, this, uh, on my schematic it's also labeled U2. So that's how I can tell it's the same part. So I'm going to take my voltage regulator, and I'm going to say, you know, I kind of want to put it up at the top. So I'm going to move some of these other parts down and out of the way. You know, so I'll move my capacitors, some of these resistors. I'm just getting parts out of the way so that I can find the parts that I really want. All right, so this is labeled VCC1, and VCC1 on my schematic is my battery input. Now, even though it, it's a battery on the schematic, you can see in the schematic editor when I click on a part, it shows me a little bit about it. This is what the part uh, ostensibly is, some sort of 9-volt battery. This is the schematic image, and this is the uh, printed circuit board image, the footprint of the part. And in this case, it's just two copper holes. So that's what I'm finding here, too. Because actually, if we're using a 9-volt battery, all we're really going to do is take a 9-volt battery wire and solder that onto the board. So that's going to be my... Uh, voltage input there. So here is my regulator itself. And then I have my two capacitors around it, C3 and C4. I'm going to try to find those. Here's C3. Oops, don't want to do that. I have to be careful when I'm grabbing things. So there's C3. And here is C4. So you'll notice that there's all of these little dashed lines running between parts. And the dashed lines running between parts are trying to show you where actual parts need to be on the board. Or, or sorry, what, what parts need to connect to each other on the board. So I can see from here that this is capacitor C3, and this hole needs to connect to that hole, for example. Which, you know, makes sense, because when I look at my schematic, one end of that capacitor connects to the input voltage, and that's what I'm seeing here. Uh, so uh, another thing to know about these rat's nest items is that they move, they'll connect to other things, they try to find the closest connection that gets them what they need. So for example, this black line here is connecting to ground, but if I move this part closer to somewhere else where there's ground, it'll, it'll shift. So instead of connecting there, it'll connect there. So it, it tries to find the nearest spot physically located to it where it could get the part that it, get the connection that it needs. So C3 I know kind of goes to the input, and C4 I know kind of goes to the output. But if, if I look here at C3, I might say, okay, I'm trying to get my lines, my lines um, uh, untangled. So if I look here, these are crossed. So I'm trying to get them untangled. So I'm going to rotate this piece around a little bit so that they're a little bit more untangled. And that looks uh, a little bit better, so I'm beginning to get there. 
them. But actually, this ground wire is running through there, so maybe I want to rotate this one as well. Uh, that that kind of looks okay. And just for continuity, maybe I would try to rotate that one, see if that's a good connection. That seems reasonable. Sure. Actually, maybe what I'll do is just kind of shift these down a little bit. I'll put my VCC in the back and rotate it so that that way my wire connects in behind the voltage regulator. So I get a nice straight connection there. I can rotate this guy and rotate that one to get my ground connections lined up where I want them. And that begins to feel like a nice setup. So I have my VCC and my two capacitors around it. So this is very arbitrary, right? Like there's nothing magical that I'm doing for deciding where to put parts. I'm just putting parts on the board and then trying to line them up to kind of to reduce the rat's nest. So I've got my uh, voltage in, my voltage regulator, and my two capacitors lined up, and they seem reasonably well connected. Okay, so next I'm going to start lining up other parts as well. So I want to look back at my schematic and just say, you know, R1, R2, and this switch and C1 all seem to connect together in a row. I could probably line those parts up in some nice way. So maybe I'll look for R1, R2, switch 1, and C1 and see what I can do with that. Move this guy out of the way a little bit. So R1... I'm just going to bring the parts close together so I can get an idea. R2, here's my switch, switch 1 and C1, all, sl all somewhat close together. Now things are kind of tangled up in ways that I'm not sure that I like, but you know I'll try to fix that in a little bit. Okay, so those guys I'm going to put together. LED1 and R3 should probably be close together. So let's take LED1 here and R3. So really, we know that R3 connects something like that, and LED1, maybe I'll rotate that to make it a little bit prettier, would connect something like that. So we're beginning to get there. What's C2? That's not seems to be... Oh yeah, C2 is that capacitor off of pin 5. Well, that's nice. Pin 5 is over here on this side, so I might be able to just get it kind of close to where it's supposed to be, rotate it around until my lines don't look as uh, congested, I'll say, and say, hmm, okay, I'm beginning to get something that looks okay. Maybe I'll move this up just to kind of get it closer. So I'm still looking to see, to reduce where I can the, the twisted up lines. So this one, there's a lot of twisting going on where this side needs to connect to here and this side needs to connect to here, so maybe I would want to rotate that resistor all the way around try and minimize some of those problems. Um, does rotating that one make it better? No, that makes it worse. So I'll keep that one like that. My switch here, yeah, it seems reasonable enough. Uh, I'm not really liking how that capacitor's looking, so I might be able to do something like, let's see, that. Yeah, that looks a little bit nicer. So I'm just trying to untangle the lines, and Fritzing calls these lines rat's nesting, because the lines indicate where connections are going to go. And ultimately, uh, I'm going to have to uh, draw physical copper traces in between all these lines. So uh, that looks reasonable, actually, as putting that together. So now maybe I will uh, try to connect my pieces together a little bit, or try to group things so they're a little bit tighter together, use less space if I can. So I might move that up there. I might move these parts up here. And you may be wondering why, when I want to move up big groups of parts, I moved the uh, board out of the way. And the reason is that the, there's kind of a weird bug in Fritzing. If the board, which is this big gray box, is there, then I can't select multiple parts because it picks the, the board instead. So I just move the board out of the way when I want to pick multiple parts at the same time to do something to. But okay, so I kind of have my parts beginning to be laid out. And now what I'm going to do is I want to physically start adding traces. So. Uh, the way I can do that is I can take this rat's nest wire, and there's two ways. I can physically draw a line, so I just click and I draw, between two things that need to be connected, or I can just grab the rat's nest wire and, and pull it where I need it. But when we're doing PCB design in Fritzing, we have two layers, the top layer and the bottom layer. 
which means you can put copper on the top of the board or on the bottom of the board to bridge connections. Now you don't want to do uh, traces on the same side of the board that cross each other because that would conduct. You can't cross traces. But I want to I want to lay one set of traces at a time. So down here where it says both layers, I'm going to click that until I see top layer. And what this means is that as I add traces, they're going to be on the top layer. So I'm going to look and say, okay, I want to make this connection here. So I'm going to just grab, I'm going to draw a line from there to there. And that gold represents a trace on the top. And I can go ahead and keep drawing more. Well, that should connect to there. I can connect the ground and the ground. There to there. There to there. There to there. And, and some of this is actually going surprisingly easily because uh, the way that I've laid out the parts I don't have a lot of rats nesting or I don't have a lot of crossing lines on my rats nest so I'm just gonna keep drawing lines and trying to connect what I can at least make sense to connect um, so my switch here strangely enough might be a bit more complicated but I can draw this line from here to here now what I just did is a problem because I just drew a connection between these two pins following the, the dashed rat's nest lines. But this trace crosses this uh, hole in copper. That would mean that it would conduct. I don't want that. So I'm going to move the trace over a little bit just to get it out of the way. In fact, I might move it over a little bit more to get it even more out of the way just to make sure that I don't have any issues with it. So I kind of curved it around to get it out of the way of this pad. And I'll do this, a similar thing here, but it, another way I can lay traces is instead of manually drawing it, I can grab the dashed rat's nest and kind of pull it to where I want to be, and when I let go, it'll draw the trace. So you'll notice that as I draw these traces, I'm trying to keep shallow angles. Uh, you don't want to have, if you can avoid it, a 90 degree or greater angle. So like this sort of design would be bad. Um, the reason for that is that when you're when the PCB is actually being produced, 90-degree uh, angles are actually surprisingly hard to produce, whereas shallow angles are easier. So if you have 90-degree angles, there's a chance that there will be a that there will be a, an error when manufacturing your board, which would cause you some trouble. Okay, so I'm just going to keep laying, and and as I begin to look at this, I begin to realize, you know, this, for example, so I run this trace down, but there's this other rat's nest that kind of crosses it that I'm not sure I'll be able to run because if I just run it. Well, that's bad, because this trace and this trace are crossing, and where they intersect on the actual board, it will conduct, and they're not supposed to conduct, so I'm going to delete that trace I just added. But for now, I'll leave it, because mentally I know that I also have the bottom of the board, that I can run other traces, and it, it, it'll be fine. So right now, I'm just looking for the easy traces to run, and doing that. So, let's see, that one looks easy. Anything else that I think might be easy? Oh, that's easy. That's an easy one. And this line, this is an interesting one. You may at first glance think, oh, well, it's crossing too many things. That's not easy. But it actually is because I can pull it up and out of the way. Let me move that down, take up a little bit less space. So that one can just run around what it was supposed to connect before. And I guess I'll run that one as well. So I'm beginning to get a lot of things uh, connected. Now I have some others here that I haven't connected. Let's see, is there any more I can do that are easy? That looks pretty, oops, not that one. Wrong wire. Uh, maybe this one. Okay, so I've added that one. And I'm looking to see if there's any others I can do that would be fairly simple. And I don't think so. It looks like anything else I want to do would be fairly complex trying to run things around, because I don't want to cross any existing traces. Well, at this point, what I can do is I can move to the bottom layer. So I'll click this until I get to bottom layer. Now the bottom layer is you know, the bottom of the board. So a bottom layer trace and a top layer trace can cross, because they're not actually conducting. They're on separate sides of the board. So I might take this black one, for example, and say, you know, I want to connect to here and I'm just kind of trying to make that easy and elegant something like that and I can draw my this green connection if I want to 
oops, it's the wrong one, this one, I could pull it down, kind of get it out of the way. So I could do something like that. And it's actually okay if you notice this trace crosses this resistor. It's okay because the resistor won't, doesn't actually touch the board. So I can run the trace under between it. I just can't touch the, the other copper. But you'll notice like here, this is a bottom trace, kind of the orange, and the gold trace is on top. The bottom trace can cross the top trace and it's not an issue. So it looks like I have two more traces I want to run. So let's see, how do I want to run this one? So if, if I look at this red one, I go, hmm, this goes, I, I don't really have a good way to do this. If I run it on the top, it would cross this yellow trace. If I run it on the bottom, it would cross this orange trace. But maybe I can move this orange trace outside of the chip entirely. So I could take, say, this part and move it up and just move outside if I want to. I can actually match. And maybe I'll just delete that trace and start again. So I want to take this trace now, and I want to run it outside the chip instead of where it's being run right now. So I could run that one down and do something like that. But now I just realized I just made two 90-degree turns on this trace. So what I might do instead is try to reduce or get rid of those 90-degree turns by just adding in a little bit of extra swing room. Okay, so I just move that trace around, which means that I can move, I can do this red one, red or brown, I guess, really easily. Now I have one more trace, this green one. I have to figure out how to get that one in because I can't go up here to cross that trace, and I can't go down below because I might cross that trace. So I somehow need to make that connection. This could be a challenge. So at this point, I look at this and I think, I'm beginning to feel like I'm stuck because I still have this green wire to connect, but it doesn't look like there's a good way to either do a top or bottom trace. So uh, I might begin to look and say, maybe I laid out my board badly. Maybe I didn't put parts where they should be. So I'm going to jump back to my schematic and see what's the problem with connection. The problem connection is this connection between R2 and R1 and trying to get it to pin 7 on my chip. So I run over to my schematic and I say R2 and R1 go to pin 7. Oh, maybe that's my problem. I put R2 and R1 on the left side of the chip, but one of their main connections is on the right side of the chip. But the connection between the switch and the timer goes to pin 2. Oh, but it could also go to pin 6. So maybe what I should be doing is these parts, instead of being where they are, should be over on the other side of the chip. Oh, well, that could be depressing because that means I have to go through and delete a bunch, of tra a bunch of traces that I've routed because I am going to be moving those parts to the other side of the chip. So I guess I'll wipe out the traces on those parts. Move this down so I can highlight the parts I need to get. I might shift them over to get them to the other side of my chip. And bring my chip over, get it closer here. Bring my parts over again. Okay, put my box back just so I can see a little bit better. So I guess this means that I'll try it again. And now, once again, I have a painful trace to route, right? Because this black line runs through a whole bunch of other existing both top and bottom traces. But I have a couple potential examples. First, I want to figure out what is that black line? So I'm trying to connect this part of this resistor to pin 1 on my chip. What was that again? Pin 1 is ground. Oh, that's interesting. Because I could, if I want to, so if it's just ground, remember this rat's nest line just indicates the closest place it knows of to find ground. But there are other places I could find ground as well, right? I could get ground from over here, because the middle pin on my voltage regulator is also ground. So maybe that's what I'll do. Maybe I'll run over here and say, well, this is, a, this is ground. So I'm going to run a trace from here to there. Of course, that bridges a whole bunch of things, so I better move it out of the way. 
oh, okay, so that's a good solution to it. When I had a troublesome trace, I'll just take a look and see, well, what is it really connected to, and is there a different place I can get that connection? And it turns out there was. I could get it from over here nearer to the voltage regulator. All right, so now I look, I zoom out a little bit, and I say, hey, it's not perfect, uh, but it seems like it'll get the job done. 